Let us remember we meet in different places on the country of the Darug speakers. We give thanks for the Wallamadigal people on which the Eastwood Church stands and their elders past, present and those yet to come. We have held as sacred the duty of protecting the land and living in harmony with it. May God honour and bless them now and to eternity. Together we meet in God's own country. Called to care for the earth. Called to be reconciled to all people. Called to become sisters and brothers in Christ, God's beloved family. And we join in our call to worship. Come, all you people, enter the presence of God. We are members of the family of God. Christ has brought us peace by making us all one people. From every nation, every race, culture and language, we gather in the one spirit. A prayer of approach based on Ephesians 1, adapted from Christine Longhurst. Merciful God, we come before you with praise and thanksgiving. Through Jesus Christ, you have lavished on us every spiritual blessing we could possibly imagine. Before the world was created, you already knew us and loved us. You adopted us as your own children and redeemed us through the life and death of Christ. Even more, you have made us your heirs and given us your own spirit as a sign and guarantee. How we praise you. Open our hearts and minds to your presence among us here. May our worship this day bring you honour and glory, for you alone are worthy of our praise. Amen. Let us pray. Jesus Christ, the human one, who walked among the people long ago and gave to them the confidence to come near, we pray that we will find that same trust today as we look at our lives before you. There are always things which we grieve in your holy presence, failures and mistakes, weaknesses or too much confidence in our convictions. We stay in silence now before you and reflect on the realities of our lives. Even as your church, the people of God, we know that we are far from perfect. We are sorry that there are times when we do not reflect your vision for us. We grieve as we travel on our struggling journeys, Jesus Christ. May we touch the hem of your robe of love and receive your forgiveness, we pray. Amen. The people who knew the Christ long ago when he walked among them were right. This Christ can be trusted with every weakness and need and will respond with compassion and grace, for we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. For we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. Don't forget that you Gentiles used to be outsiders. You were called uncircumcised heathens by the Jews who were proud of their circumcision, even though it affected only their bodies and not their hearts. In those days, you were living apart from Christ. You were excluded from citizenship among the people of Israel and you did not know the covenant promises God had made to them. You lived in this world without God and without hope, but now you have been united with Christ Jesus. Once you were far away from God, but now you have been brought near to him through the blood of Christ. For Christ himself has brought peace to us. 
He united Jews and Gentiles into one people when in his own body on the cross, he broke down the wall of hostility that separates us. He did this by ending the system of law with its commandments and regulations. He made peace between Jews and Gentiles by creating in himself one new people from the two groups. Together as one body, Christ reconciled both groups to God by means of his death on the cross, and our hostility toward each other was put to death. He brought this good news of peace to you Gentiles who were far away from him and peace to the Jews who were near. Now all of us can come to the Father through the same Holy Spirit because of what Christ has done for us. So now, you Gentiles, are no longer strangers and foreigners. You are citizens along with all of God's holy people. You are members of God's family. Together we are his house, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets. And the cornerstone is Christ Jesus himself. We are carefully joined together in him, becoming a holy temple for the Lord. Through him, you Gentiles are also being made part of this dwelling where God lives by his spirit. For the letters that teach us about God's peace and promises, thanks be to God. Getting organised during this lockdown period, I thought we might journey together with the letter to the Ephesians. So I've spent much of the last three weeks rereading Ephesians, honing up on commentaries and doing some research about different interpretations. The two Bible Project videos we just watched helped to give us some of the background, both to reading letters and about the specific structure and content of Paul's letter to the Ephesians. Knowing that this week is both the National Assembly for the Uniting Church and it's also one great Sunday of sharing, an annual event, I have had two different sermon titles in my mind. The first was, Apart, Can We Find a New Union? And the other is, This Blended Family, This Community of God. As you know, I come from blended cultural backgrounds. When I first started going to a uniting church, we had already adopted the statement, we are a multicultural church. It was an aspirational statement. We wanted to be multicultural, but people did not always agree on what that meant. Indeed, even today, there are constant struggles to name who we are, what we are trying to be, and why we think God calls us to be a particular kind of church family. As we reread the letter to the Ephesians, we see that God's plan for the diversity of all humanity and creation being made into a masterpiece has come unstuck. Even with renewed covenant, there was a tendency for God's people to divide themselves up and separate themselves. Whether we like to admit it or not, much of the separation is related to social struggles around power and influence. Among the believers in Ephesus, this played out between Jewish and Gentile believers. Yes, they followed the same Lord, Jesus Christ, but their cultures were so different and it's a major struggle to try to do anything together. Paul lists off a series of words that effectively name division. Gentiles, uncircumcised, separate, excluded, foreigners, without hope, without God far away. May as well have said, not like us. Amazingly though, Paul states that the barriers have been smashed down through Jesus Christ. Eugene Peterson paraphrases it this way in the message. He tore down the wall we used to keep each other at a distance. He repealed the law code that had become so clogged with fine print and footnotes that it hindered more than it helped. Then he started over. As commentator Eric Densley put it, Jesus came preaching peace. Peace to those who thought of themselves as close to God. Peace to those feeling far away from God. 
the feelings don't much matter. We're all in the same boat, and together in Jesus Christ, we can be fellow citizens of the people of God. That is what really counts. Everyone is included. No matter who you are, no matter what you've done, no matter what your educational, racial or social background, you belong. You fully belong. At the moment, we are far away from each other. We are living under lockdown orders, isolated from one another, yet we also belong with and to one another because we belong to God. In belonging to God and to one another, we also carry responsibilities to remember our shared identity. When you feel most alone and isolated, Pray for others who are also alone and isolated. If you can bring yourself to do it, pick up the phone and offer a greeting of encouragement. Hi, it's Amelia here from Eastwood Church. I just rang to see how you are going during lockdown. Are you doing okay? Or, hi, I just rang because I realised I hadn't talked to anyone for a few days, so I thought I should reach out. Is now a good time or is there a better time for me to call back? Those who have been far away can be close in our prayers and in our conversations. The Ephesians, coming from different cultures, needed to learn new ways to pray together and for one another. They had to learn how to be in a new household. Christ becomes the cornerstone of a new home, where an attitude of peace smashes down any dividing walls. But peace is not simply the absence of conflict. Peace is not passive. Relational peace implies harmony, collaboration, working together. A peace-filled family is not one that avoids one another in order to manage risk, but instead is committed to one another and committed to working together. This is the challenge for us in being the uniting church in Eastwood. How can we all work together intentionally? If we're going to fulfill the aspirations named in chapter 2 of Ephesians, we are going to have to become even more intentional about collaborating and sharing across different interest groups and service time. I think it's great that our community has a range of small groups and fellowships and interest groups. These are wonderful ways of maintaining strong relationships and support networks. But I also want to challenge every fellowship, small group and interest group, how can you reach across to others to encourage them? It's not about looking inwards in order to grow your own group. This is about how do we grow a range of relationships between different groups and strengthen broader networks. Are there projects that can be contributed to from multiple groups that allow us to share in some identity building? The leader's photo board at church was a deliberate way to demonstrate that we share in this community across cultures and languages, ages and genders. Diversity is a strength for the church Paul envisions. Is it a strength for us? I believe that it can be. Over recent weeks, we've poured a lot of energy into developing the new website and I really encourage you to look at it and help us to improve it. We're trying to strengthen our online presence in three languages. We've taken a leap of faith in employing Winnie a few hours a week to help us to develop the Chinese language on the site, and Kyung Hee, our student minister, has been helping with the Korean. We need photos and contributions of prayers, news and information. This is something that illustrates publicly our diversity, hopefully, we will be able to demonstrate visibly to the wider church and the wider community that we are not strangers and aliens, but citizens with the saints and members of the household of God, built together as a dwelling place for God. In a couple of weeks' time, we will have the opportunity to formalise the kind of ministry we've committed to in having Tennyson with us at Eastwood Uniting Church. We're going to take the next couple of weeks to talk about it in more depth. There will be some online coffee times when we can have a chat about things and see what can be done in terms of reaching out into the wider community in the Eastwood area. 
Much of our community is Asian, and it might mean that many of us have to learn how to communicate in new ways. It's not just about language, it's also about how we plan on doing things together. What kinds of efforts do we have to make? And how could we really enjoy doing it? I'm not wanting to ask anyone to be really uncomfortable, but I am encouraging people to experience new joys and to look forward to them. Let's do this together to be a new dwelling place for God. Amen. In Christ, all humans are swept away. This we affirm. Jesus Christ has made peace between peoples of every race, culture and class. We are witness bearers to this truth. Our life together can be a foretaste of the reconciliation of all things in Christ. We will seek to live as a sign and witness to the kingdom and a sign of hope within the Australian community. As we move towards this new day, we stand before God and our sisters and brothers to face who we are and who we seek to be. We hear the call of God to be open to the gifts of all God's people. It will mean naming sin of racism, even when it exists in the body of Christ. We will work to create a community of justice and love. None of God's people are to be pushed to the fringes of our church. We will ensure that there are equitable rights in the use of uniting church properties, access to our church's resources, full participation in decision-making, in the council of the church, and pastoral care for all God's people. And when we are tempted to hold on to what we have from the past and insulate ourselves from the hurt and struggles of each other. God give us courage to step out of comfort and familiar zones. May we celebrate the richness of our diversity and unity which is your gift. We go forward as your people, carrying within us the dream of God's renewed and reconciled creation. Amen. We have gathered and we are sent to live out relationships that follow in the way of Jesus. We live as neighbours, not strangers as brothers and sisters, not them and us, to celebrate the diversity of our human family and the unity of our call to peace, love and justice. May God, our Creator, bless you with eyes to see the beauty of all people and the glory of God's creation. May Christ Jesus fill you with love for your neighbour far and near. May the Holy Spirit empower you with courage and passion to shape communities of God's liberating hope. Amen.